Hello. Hello. Wonderful to see you all today. Welcome to the First Congregational Church, United Church of Christ in South Portland, Maine. I am the Reverend Stephen Savage, and I use he, him pronouns. Reverend Allison Patton, who you may have been expecting to walk out here this morning, is out this week visiting her son in college, and I certainly hope that she's having as much fun as she expected to. Uh, Terry Foster, our co-director of music, is out this week, but in his place we are joined by the amazing Albert Melton, who will be accompanying us on organ today, and uh, what a gift that is. Uh, and of course, Deirdre, where, ah, there's Deirdre. Deirdre back there uh, is here to help keep us all in tune in case we wander too far off, which for me is, is a regular occurrence. <laughs> if you're worshiping with us via live stream today, we are so glad that you are joining us. We want to give a big shout out as we now, you know, as we do every week uh, to Alex Rada, who is manning our stream. Uh, give Alex a wave. We're so glad that everyone here in this room and at home is joining us. No, no matter where you are, though, whenever we gather together to worship, we remember that we are indeed the first congregational church of South Portland, a Christian community loving, welcoming, and serving. And we, we remember out loud together a phrase that you'll find on your bulletins or at the end of the live stream. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Now please, join me in taking a deep and spirit-filled breath. If you haven't already, and it's comfortable, place your feet flat on the floor and ground yourself in this place and in this moment together as a community let us prepare to worship the living, loving God. Today we continue a season of new beginnings. New beginnings for this community of faith and maybe even for some of you as well. The start of any new project or relationship comes with a chance to cultivate a little bit of holy wonder we've come to call it recently. It's a chance to get curious together about each other and about God's spirit moving in and all around us. So we ask questions. Where are you from? Where does it hurt? What do you need? What makes your heart sing? When we listen deeply, allowing our hearts to be cracked open with compassion and with wonder, then the asking becomes a sacred practice, the healing balm. This morning as we gather for worship, we begin by asking a new question. Where do you find strength? Join me now in this morning's call to worship. When the way is difficult and dangerous, let us still choose what is good and just. When evil comes to break us down and break us apart, let us still choose. When power from on high strikes fear in our hearts, let us still choose the courage to persist. For we know that the love and power of God which abides in us will not be overcome. Let us be strong enough to have faith in that love and that power. Our opening hymn today is Wind Who Makes All Winds That Blow. It's number 217 in the red hymnal, and it will be on the screen as well.
friends, there is no doubt that to truly follow Christ is to seek to make our world a better place. Through our work and through our example, and yet to be human is to be imperfect and to make mistakes. To be human is to have limits and to be a finite piece of this incredible creation. That tension, that tension present in the relationship between us and our creation is, in the end, the very reality that we live as Christians. There is great value in recognizing this truth, and so I invite you to join me in a spirit of prayer. God of love and forgiveness, we mean to be upright and strong for those in need of aid or of advocate. We mean to be comfort and friend to those who ache and whose spirits churn and sputter in the face of grief and loss. We long to live as Christ modeled. Lives lived for you and for your beloved yet we often miss those marks. We shrink from conflict, and in moments of dire need, we recede within ourselves in fear of inadequacy and inconvenience. Forgive us for these very human flaws, these very mortal inconsistencies. Kindle in the hollows within us where shame and regret now linger the flame of your spirit. Lend us the strength to do and to be better followers of your will made flesh in Jesus Christ. Shine your perfect love and unimaginable grace on us. And in that light, give us strength. And now, friends, let us take a moment to rest in that light of God's love given to those in need before even they ask for it. Friends, ours is a God of love, grace, and forgiveness. Rest assured that there is no cost or requirement that you must achieve or pay out in order to receive that love, in order to deserve that grace or that forgiveness. These things are given freely and without limit. Take comfort in that truth and may it be a source of strength for us all. And may we take a moment to celebrate this moment, this time spent together by sharing the peace of Christ with one another. The peace of Christ be with you. Take a moment and share that peace with one another and with the folks at home right upstairs. And now, as we've been doing for a few weeks, let's sing together our song response, Peace Like a River. And don't be afraid to sing out so that you can't hear me. It would be a pain. <laughs>
That was awesome. It gets better and better every week. <laughs> well, are there any young folk that would like to join me up front today? I'll cut one, two, three intrepid, intrepid folks that are going to join me. I won't keep you for long, I promise. But I had a question. Do you like superheroes? Comic books, kind of, a little bit? You know who some of them are, though? Okay. Have you ever been nervous to give a presentation or to talk in front of a group or to get pulled up front by the pastor and talk in front of a whole church? <laughs> a little bit, a little bit nervous, maybe? Do you think Superman is ever nervous to stand in front of a group of wonderful folks like you all? Probably not, right? Maybe like the Hulk. That's another one of my, my son's favorites is the Hulk. No. Um, Wonder Woman or any of those. Do you suppose they're nervous ever? Well, probably depends, right? But probably not often is what it probably, right? I saw a TED Talk forever ago that said that if you're going to be nervous, that you can boost your confidence by standing like a superhero for a moment just before you go into your meeting. <laughs> I don't do it often, but when I do, someone usually sees me, and it's embarrassing. But it works, too, to stand with your chest puffed out, your shoulders back, just to, to be confident and, and, and really feel the heroic part, right? It adds, gives you some confidence. We're talking today about strength and where we get it. And we can get that strength from a lot of things. We can get it from standing like a superhero. I highly recommend it. Maybe you can do it with me. You, want, you feel like standing like a superhero now? No? Okay, fair enough, fair enough. I did pull you in front of a group. I get it. Um, but if you ever, you know, you feel like standing like a superhero, that's one way to, to boost your confidence a little bit. Another is to remember there are that there are people in your lives who love you very much, your parents, your siblings, your friends. These people are on your side, even if you look silly or you say the wrong word or, or you stand like this. Maybe my usual standing position from now on, I don't know. Um, but they're always on your side and that gives you a feeling of confidence. That same thing can come from knowing that God is always with us. God is always with us. God always believes in us. We are, we are, we are special and beautiful and wonderful and strong and capable. And as far as God is concerned, we're pretty awesome. Very good, I think, were the words that God used. So there's something to chew on. Something that I was hoping you'd take with you. Remember that you are always, always up to the task if you give yourself you know, the credit. So I'll let, you, I'll let you get out from in front of everybody with me. But thanks for coming out. And I encourage you, when no one's looking at you, all right, you're free to go. And if you'd like, I think the, a couple of our Sunday school teachers, Miss Kathy and Miss Sandra, are going to take any of you who are interested up to, uh, to Sunday school today. And now, I believe Tom's going to call us together for the prayer of illumination. <laughs> or I could read the prayer of illumination. I think you're... You're up next. I'm sorry. I'm throwing him under the bus. Friends, please join me now in the prayer for illumination. Open our hearts and minds, O Lord, by the gift of your Holy Spirit, so that as the word is read and proclaimed, we may hear what you have to say to us today. Amen. Today's reading is from Habakkuk 3, verses 17 through 19. Though the fig tree does not blossom and no fruit is on the vines, though the produce of the olive fails and the fields yield no food, though the flock is cut off from the fold and there is no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. 
I will exalt in the God of my salvation. God, the Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer and makes me tread upon the heights. Those of you who recognize that that was not the same passage that was listed in the bulletin get extra points if you didn't roll your eyes and say, <laughs> I did, and I'm the one who put it in there by accident. So, if we took the time to read the entirety of the book of Habakkuk, we would find a person in conversation with God asking questions like, where are you when I need you? Why don't you answer me? God's answers are hard to accept. Given the reality that Habakkuk describes throughout the book. A world of nations destroyed, homes stolen, and lives lost. Yet God assures Habakkuk that they do hear and they do listen to Habakkuk's words. And that they will indeed respond to Habakkuk's pleas for a better future. So the hardships will not simply cease. They will not simply end. Instead, God says that they will continue to be at work in the world despite those hardships. And that the horror will cease. One must simply be patient enough to wait and to work until that day. It all sounds easier said than done. Whether this book describes the rise of the Babylonian Empire, which we know as one set of troublesome folks in our Hebrew scriptures, that same group of troublesome folks that would come to exile the Jews to lands far from home. Or as some believe, maybe this book is a, is a story meant to critique the Roman Empire that comes to power years after the time of exile. Either way, the world Habakkuk describes is a hard one to stomach. Injustice and violence Fear and scarcity, the subjugation of the small at the hands of giants. Where is God? And how is one supposed to carry on in faith despite those horrible realities? Here's a question that might not have the answer you want it to have. How different is our world today? the world that Habakkuk describes. It's not different enough. There are hungry and sick all around the world when others have access to cures and treatments and health care. Abundance and plenty is known to a wealthy minority while so many have too little. Wars rage. And true equality remains a too distant dream to too many despite how far we may have come. So as we ask ourselves some of these same questions that Habakkuk posed to God, I'd like to ask you one more. Where do you find strength? For those of you thinking that this is a dark and dreary message so far, I hope you'll turn it around and see. I was reading about strength in preparation for this sermon. The word can mean different things in different situations. For some, it means the ability to lift or manipulate heavy objects with their body. I've heard it said that some people pick stuff up and they put it down. Say it with an accent, though, and it's funny. Uh, for some, it, the word strength can mean power, 
influence. In certain circumstances, strength can mean agency or an ability to act. And yet I believe the way that we should think about it today, the way that I need to hear stamina, I mean strength today, I gave it away, is as stamina, resilience, and an ability to carry on despite everything that needs to be done. In one blog post, I read that a mother, who also happens to be a psychologist, I heard, I, I read a description of her experience during COVID and the lockdown. She described the tremendous drain that the pandemic imposed on herself, on her clients, on her family. She noted how the continued anxiety and stress of shutdown and illness together was leaving its mark on people. I wonder how many of us could relate to that. Many of us have felt similarly over the course of the past few years and at other times in our lives. Add to that the continued political unrest that we cannot argue has certainly been consistent for a while now in our country and around the world. And the wars that have claimed too many lives and still rage on. And any number of other things, and one could be forgiven for just disconnecting from time to time or more, maybe more often. But for many, those abbreviated breaks are either too little or too late at this point. So they aren't really doing it anymore. For many, those breaks aren't even available at all. So I ask again, where do you find your strength? That mother, that psychologist, noted that she found great strength in her children. As she struggled with the challenges of the new life that COVID presented to her, she watched her children adapt, persevere, and weather the storm. It served as inspiration enough for her to dust herself off and to carry on. The toll of everything remained, but she was empowered by the example of her children. And from that found the strength to carry on a little bit further. Another day, and another, and so on, finding strength in another, finding strength in her children and in those around her, and in that way, regaining what our world of late has threatened to strip away. It's safe to say that we all have our individual sources of strength. For many of us, it is family. For many friends, for, for many, it is it is wisdom for many. It is the ability to do good for others. There are many, many sources of strength. I'd like to share a little bit of my own story and where I found strength at a time that was incredibly difficult for me and yet often I reflect on it and don't give it the credit that it deserves. Namely, that is my certain portion of my childhood. See, I was nine or ten when my grandmother started taking me occasionally to this little church, this little Episcopal church down the street. And I was pretty new to town at this point. I was from a town just down the street, but all the people that I spent my time with were new, and kids are notoriously difficult to get to know when you're feeling self-conscious about yourself. And so there I was. To say that I was awkward would be a compliment. Though I can be a harsh critic of myself sometimes, I suppose, I would, I would say that to say I was awkward would be a very gentle way of putting it. Looking back, I can see myself in my high water pants, a very well-trained side part, what is naturally 
and straight and greasy hair, <laughs> an innate command of sarcasm, a reluctance to be the center of attention and yet a need to feel connected. It would be fair to say that I found it tough to fit in in most places. But even then, I could use humor to diffuse most situations, as I do to this day. So I made my way, roughly, through that early time in my childhood in Wyndham. At first, church was no different. Church was just another place where I was somebody new, somebody Nobody knew somebody who was too shy to go and talk to other people. Awkward and a little bit lonely. But then, largely because my grandmother told me I needed to, I gave it a chance. And the youth director at that time was a strange, strange, wonderful man. His name was Dan, and I say he was strange because I think this will be an effective image for you, but... Have you, can you imagine a cross between Flanders from The Simpsons and an old-timey sea captain? <laughs> he had khaki pants and sweater and, and, and uh, suspenders, thank you, that's the word. He wore, a, he wore a cap down low and he smoked a pipe. He smoked a pipe. He smoked a pipe. He was wonderful. He was he was nerdy in all the best ways, and he saw me. And with that, I found the strength and the courage to take that next step, to be that, to meet that next person, to say hello and to overcome that next hurdle. He gave my overthinker's mind a chance to put together words, gave me space to be uniquely me. There are many others that have come along to play similar roles in my life, just as I hope I have come along to play a similar, similar role for others. Folks from my family, my friends, and teachers, ministers, fellow journeyers on this path we call faith, each of them engaging with me, modeling and showing acceptance and celebrating quirks. I have had those people in my lives from time to time, and because of them I have grown to be the person I was meant to be. As an adult, I've had more time to explore the source, that interesting source of my strength, and I found that I've, there's a term for me, I'm what's called an introverted extrovert, because I like to keep things as complicated as possible. I'm energized by people. I am strengthened by you all, although I do require alone time and quiet to recharge other parts of myself. This has been another important thing, recognizing myself, getting to know myself so that I know what gives me strength, what recharges my batteries, setting boundaries and establishing practices that care for me, and I still have a long way to go. But all of these things have become a means of strengthening myself. These are places that I find strength. From this I've developed a deep love for community, a community that protects one another, cares for one another, and respects one another's boundaries. This church and each of my faith communities has been one of those for me, as I hope it is for you. I find the strength to overcome my innate awkwardness maybe to celebrate my innate awkwardness now, and to share my gifts with all of you through the way that we are all community together. I find strength doing the work of the church when I do it at your side.
So where do you find strength? Is it in the faces of those that you love? The actions of those sitting in the pews or on the couches next to you? Is it in the work that you do? In the impact that you make? Where do you find strength? What gives you the strength that you as a Christian need to wade into injustice? What gives you the strength that you as a human being need to wade into unsurety? I'm not sure that's a word, but hopefully you, you knew what I meant. What gives you that strength? tell you what, I bet that when you, when you can nail it down, when you, when you found it, it will have a few names. It may be friends, it may be family, it may be love, but it will also be God. The God that you witness through those acts. That you witness through that smile or the kind word shared by a loved one. God is another name for a place where we can all find strength. Strength to be more, to be better, to stand a little taller. I'm telling you, you're never getting rid of that. You're just going to be a superhero all the time. The simple act of sharing what you find strengthening, the simple act of finding and sharing that piece of your journey, your realization, may be exactly what gives strength to someone sitting next to you. Sharing your story, opening yourself and being a companion, an advocate, a friend to those on the road at your side. Maybe what you know in your heart is a source of strength and confidence for you is in fact a solution that your neighbor has been searching for. So I ask again, what gives you strength? I hope you'll share those strengths, those sources with one another and with me. And know that this community, as a facet of God in the world, is here to strengthen, to invigorate, to support, and to celebrate all of you.
please join me in a spirit of prayer. May the love of God surround us. May the peace of Christ comfort us. May the strength of the Holy Spirit sustain us. O Lord, hear our prayer. pray today for a world torn in war, for all the nations around the world experiencing war for Sudan, Ukraine, Russia, Israel, and Palestine, for the lives lost. For the fears and the slights that force confused minds to violence. For the loss pain, the force, the mourning, the grieving, and the terrified survivors. For the realities outside of our understanding, outside of our ability to wrap our minds or our hearts around that force people, people to inflict violence on others. God, each and every one of us carries in our hearts a burden. Each of us carries the weight that our life has placed on our shoulders. Each of us knows different pain, knows different joy, knows different anxiety and expectation. Each of us sees the world through slightly different eyes. Yet, in the face of atrocities, we cannot help but cry out for those who suffer. We cannot help but send love and prayer to the grieving mother and father, to the child whose parents are gone or whose future has changed. We pray, O oh beloved God, that you might settle on the minds and the hearts of those who lead the nations of the world those who lead troops, who wield implements of war, settle on their minds and their hearts, O Lord, and soften them. Calm them, quench them, that they might not feel the need to strike out destroy, take, that they might dedicate their resources to building 
supporting and protecting his church. Give our voices power, O Lord, the voices of your people, your children, that we might go out into the world and speak so that those leaders can hear us. Give us words that those leaders may understand us. Be present in us so that those leaders might change. words are inadequate. Our hearts ache and our minds spin in confusion and yet, Lord, we raise our voices to you and say, use us. Help us in our specific, unique, and wonderful ways to change world, that it might be a world of peace and plenty, that it might be a world of bright tomorrows and tomorrows and tomorrows. Lord, know our hearts, know our minds, know the joys we carry, the celebrations we, we cling to yet feel in this moment to step back and make space for the needs of so many of them, O oh Lord. In the name of Christ, who gave of himself not to destroy or to raise or to figure but to to celebrate to build to create and to promise a future of love for all we but ask speak with us and we pray together as well in the words like those that Jesus taught our mother and father in heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. To maintain the work of God's people, this gathering that we have each week, and the ways that the love we share spills out into the world, to maintain that work. To translate our faith and love into food and warmth, safety and justice, to do these things requires resources, time, energy, passion, skill, and of course, financial contributions. These things make it possible to gather, to prepare and to act out the work of loving the world. Your gifts, all of your gifts, provide those resources and for them, we as a people, we as a church, are eternally grateful. feel inspired to give today or any day. We encourage that you make a financial offering by leaving it in the black box at the back of the sanctuary if you're joining us in person on Sunday morning. By giving a secure online gift, either by hitting the donate link at the top of our website page, fccucc.org or by scanning the QR code that's in your bulletin right now. Of 
support by mailing a check to the church. Take a moment, if you'd like, if you have your phone on you, you could even do it from the pew, and make an offering now. Consider other ways you might continue to offer in the future to become a larger part of the life of this church. Now, if you'll join me in a spirit of prayer, we can bless the gifts that we give today and all those that we give at other times. Beloved God, bless the gifts that we give and the spirit with which they are given. Put these things to use, O Lord, to bring about your will and to do your wondrous work here in this place and around the world as well. Amen. Our closing hymn is Seek Ye First, number 443, and we'll sing it through two times, I think. Well, I think I know which one. All right. have a couple of announcements. Pastor Allison invites you to join her at the Evening for the Environment on Thursday, October 26th from 6 to 8 p.m. at the University of New England's Innovation Hall in Portland. The event will feature a discussion between Penobscot Nation Ambassador Maureen Bryant and Dr. Ayanya Elizabeth Johnson, a marine biologist, policy expert, writer who was who co-authored the blue new deal to register please see your bulletin or weekly word for a link if you would like to attend but the cost is prohibitive please reach out to pastor allison either way let pastor allison know if you plan to attend and she will coordinate carpooling and or save you a seat perhaps you have heard over the past few weeks that we are in need of sunday school teachers here at First Congregational Church. There have been several volunteers, but there's still room for more. If you are interested, please contact Pastor Steve at steve at fccucc.org. Lynn, 
Lancourt has in the last. I am so glad to put this hat on. I hope I have it on right. Okay. Saturday, December 2nd, is the date of the Holidays Bazaar. In preparation, I checked out the bazaar storage and asked some questions of the donations. Where are you from? The attic, the kitchen, the library, the jewelry box, the sewing machine, the knitting needles. How oh do you? What do you need? Some new companions. Help in getting to our destinations. Willing purchasers. Where do you hurt? When we're put on the shelf for another year, what makes you happy? A successful bazaar where we are displayed with love and find new homes. I'm now asking you, what can you do to help? Christine Campbell needs cooks and helpers for the breakfast buffet she is presenting this year. No lunch, breakfast buffet. I need three helpers to sort and deliver donations on Thursday, November 30th morning. At the most, it would be a three hour commitment. Heather Payson will need lots of bakers for the cookie walk and food tables. And I think maybe they might need some candy makers too. Be a, I, be a person with a truck to make a dump run on Friday, tw December 1st and or Saturday the 12th of December afternoon. Um, it can be to the South Portland dump, it can be to the Cape Elizabeth dump, but it needs to go to the dump. I need four able-bodied people to tear down and restore the church on Saturday afternoon for about 1.30. And depending on how able-bodied and smart you are, depends on how long it takes us to do it. But the church has to be ready for church on Sunday morning. And I need you to spread the word on your social media, invite your friends, and attend with you. And I want you all to come because we have a great time. I guess we all know where we'll be that day. Beloved in Christ, as you leave this place, may God grant you the curiosity to conquer assumptions, counter assumptions, not conquer, counter, the vulnerability to befriend, the bravery to speak your truth, the wisdom to listen, the strength to ask for help, the resilience to choose love even when it is hard, and the awareness of the Holy Spirit always moving through you. In the name of the great connector, love itself, go 